Hello friends, Alex Jones here with my final report on the Copenhagen-Denmark summit. This event was billed by the United Nations as the most important meeting in their history. And the Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, stated this would establish global government or global governance. Uh, David de Rothschild has also given speeches and talked about how they are attempting to establish global government. Uh, we also have Herman von Rumpy, the head of the EU, announcing that this signifies the first year of a true global government and that the carbon taxing uh, system will be the funding mechanism for the world government. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. It, it's, it's past the point of talking. Um, we know historically that the global governance um, the sort of agenda um, to these issues is, is, is very hard to try and is, 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 with all the best intentions it's very hard to actually activate. I can happily announce to you that the event has ended uh, in massive failure, but unfortunately not complete failure. Because when the New World Order doesn't first succeed, they try, try again. And so that's why we have to be eternally vigilant against what they're doing. Uh, of course, the whole thing has been sold as if it is a uh, plan to save the Earth from the ravages of carbon dioxide that plants breathe uh, and that humans exhale. And uh, the fact that ClimateGate came out in the month before the UN uh, meeting in Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, is the number one reason that their agenda is in so much trouble. So this has been a great victory for people all over the world that don't want to live under a private, unelected uh, United Nations dictatorship. But one of the other big reasons that the uh, conference uh, has largely failed, I'll get into their one victory, and it is substantive, uh, is because the Danish text, uh, two days into the meeting last week, uh, got leaked. And this was the plan of the industrialized world to basically double the amount of taxes on the third world to freeze their economic development and to keep them uh, basically uh, impoverished so that uh, the IMF and World Bank consortiums for private central banks could continue to come in and uh, keep them under their control uh, and keep them deep in debt. When that came out, you had a real revolt by Latin America, Africa, uh, and the poorer areas of Asia and Eastern Europe. It was clear, and the London Guardian reported, that if that agreement would have been implemented, the United Nations itself would lose any petty power it had, and all global governance power would be transferred to the IMF and World Bank, who would arbitrarily, and in an unelected fashion, levy global taxes on all transportation, ship travel, air traffic, and have a global authority over it, a flat 2% GDP tax implemented by the private banks over the entire world, uh, taxes as high as 20% uh, on fossil fuels, not just oil, but natural gas. I mean, just a huge power grab, as Ban Ki-moon said, the establishment of global government. And he told the LA Times two days ago that we will force the establishment of global governance. That's a quote. I mean, this guy is giving interviews saying, we're going to force through global governance. And that has always been the main goal of the conference. So understand what's happened, ladies and gentlemen. It came out that the head UN scientists, the main research facilities in England, the United States, and Europe, had been hired by the UN to produce fraudulent data. That came out in ClimateGate. Since then, other scientists and meteorologists have blown the whistle at universities and government institutions from Canada, the US, Australia, New Zealand, Russia, where more fraud uh, was engaged in. And so since then, ClimateGate has blown a big window, a big hole uh, into the facade so people can look in and see the fraud. So that's been unfolding. Unfortunately, the globalists have achieved their main goal, though. They've been discredited. They've been exposed as frauds. It's all over the news now that Al Gore has made hundreds of millions and is set to make billions and that 
George Soros is set to make hundreds of billions off carbon trading. He controls. It's in the news now that Obama owns part of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange that's selling these carbon credits. Uh, and that Maury Strong, who's now had to run from, to China from the U.S. because he is in danger of being indicted for the U.N. oil for food scandal. I mean, it's really coming out that these guys are a gaggle of crooks. That's positive. So as a, on a public relations front, they've really been exposed as frauds. The problem is they're still in control of the Western nations. They're still in control of the United Nations. They've still, through IMF and World Bank loans from U.S. taxpayer money predominantly, bought off the third world leaders. And so even though they've been exposed, they're still going ahead uh, with a draft uh, that the major nations have signed on to. They just wanted to expand their agreement uh, for more taxation and control to establish a global framework and a global enforcement system uh, in the future to levy these taxes and to regulate these taxes on a planetary scale. So they have gotten that. We interviewed yesterday and today Lord Christopher Monckton, uh, who's an expert on this and who's been in the Copenhagen uh, event uh, for the last uh, week and a half, to get his take on it. And the PrisonPlanet.com exclusive headline is, British Peer, Copenhagen Summit has established a world government. So the media is saying it's a total failure. And it is a failure from the whole agenda they wanted, but not a failure in that they have agreed to meet again in Mexico City, and they have agreed that they will... Uh, begin setting up and establishing this system to run the planetary regulation and taxation and control over all industry and all human activity. It's also come out that the head of the IPCC at the UN owns the Indian steel plant uh, that uh, the British paid to have one of their steel plants shut down and to have it moved to India. So uh, you know, that's coming out. So, so, I mean, there's so much to cover here. The point is the really good news for everyone is that their agenda is being exposed. They didn't get a lot of what they wanted, but the bad news is they got the heart uh, of what they wanted through. We are definitely gaining traction. The momentum is now shifting over to people that want national sovereignty, uh, that want to have elected a governments, that don't want to live like people in the European Union who've lost their sovereignty to the unelected bureaucrats in Brussels. Uh, so despite the fact that Obama got angry and lectured everyone and said, you know, the time for talk is over, you must submit to the entire agenda, despite the fact that he did that, uh, they, have still, they have still failed. It also came out separately on the climate gate front that uh, the top scientist of the IPCC, who works for Maurice Strong, this broke nationally uh, here in the United States on, 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 on national television uh, in a video interview uh, for the first time, Ben Santer the head climate researcher at the IPCC, author of Chapter 8, the IPCC Working Group report, admits that they deleted five sections from the UN's own report that stated that man is not contributing to climate change. You understand the UN scientists brought them the research and said, we can't prove man's doing this. It looks like man has no, no effect whatsoever compared to the sun and the moon and all these other tidal forces. And uh, he cut that out. So that's now coming out. So the dam has broken on the manipulation of the data. Uh, and so the beginning of the end has certainly begun as long as we continue to expose this fraudulent agenda for what it is. A plan by a group of industrialists and bankers to scare the world population into relinquishing their rights and turning it over to an unelected IMF World Bank government that taxes the West then takes that money and loans it back to third world and first world nations uh, and then makes those nations agree to a list of demands to destroy their industrial capacity, which will result in a death sentence. Fifteen million people starve to death a year in the third world. Uh, over a hundred million people are right on the verge of starvation at any one time, and so it's very easy to tip them into mass starvation and death. Just the ethanol production in the U.S. and in Brazil and a few other countries uh, taking a third of our grain production out and putting it in for ethanol uh, caused an additional 10 million people uh, to starve to death uh, in 2008. And those are conservative numbers. So, so think of the scale of mass murder and genocide that we're dealing with here. And that's how Mao Zedong killed over 60 million people and how Stalin uh, killed more than 10 million in the Ukraine was by simply uh, cutting the food supply off to people. 
And, and that's what is what is at the heart of this global government. For the new world order, global government's only the beginning. Once they have the global government, they can then carry out the austerity measures that are meant to shut down industrial society, bankrupt the West, and make everyone dependent on government and state. So we've engaged in a fight here. We've had major victories, the greatest victories we've ever had. The problem is our enemy is continuing uh, to force the point uh, and moving forward uh, against free humanity. But agents of liberty, agents of freedom, uh, are uh, activating everywhere and resisting. So I salute everyone uh, who has uh, been fighting this uh, good fight for truth and justice against the New World Order. In the coming days, we'll know more about what happened uh, behind closed doors uh, at the United Nations Climate Summit. Uh, but right now, things are looking pretty good. But again, we'll learn more in the coming days. And you can watch InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com as this develops. Again, I salute you all.